Welcome to the tour of the new Opus Projector 2022.4. We have a great new release this year. With your help, one of the most stable ones, I'd say, or the most stable one, we have fixed over 100 bucks. Many of those were sent in by you, so many thanks if you sent in a bug. This already brings me to the first new feature. You might have used this feedback feature here. A similar dialog pops up if you uh, have an exception, a crash. And of course, you can also report an issue or bug via this dialog or send us a feature request. In any case, once you click send, oh, I need the subject, feedback. Once you click send, you got this dialog here with ticket number and that's it. You didn't hear about it again. As you can already see, this is different now. We have a new tab here in the bottom called Reported Issues. In this tab, you will see all issues that you have sent us. And not only that, you can open each issue and see details about it. At the moment, you can only see date of creation and last update, but you can already see that you can see comments from us here and you can also send us comments. So here I can send a customer comment and we will be notified of that in our ticket system. Now I will do some magic and be the supporter and send a comment to you as the customer. So just a second. Okay, so now I send a comment through our ticket system and this view will update every five minutes. So at the latest in five minutes, I would get a little pop-up notification here. Or if I'm impatient and I want to know all the time, I can refresh manually here. And you see there is a pop-up and I can click on it. And there you can see is the comment by the supporter. With this system, you have a complete overview and you can track all the issues, all the requests and general feedback that you send us. Whatever we do, if we work on this ticket, if we close the ticket, you will see the progress right here. And as always, of course, you can use this number to contact us and push us about the problem or ask some detailed question, but you can use the comments here for that as well. This will not be unnoticed if you send something here. I have said that in the previous year and I hope you have found if you send reports that quite often we ask for feedback. Now it will be even easier because in the past we, we sometimes had issues sent anonymously without a customer name or an email. So it was not possible to contact you. Sometimes the information that is being sent with an exception is not enough. Sometimes we need to ask some follow-up questions. And for that, we kindly ask you to fill out these fields. It will make it that much easier to contact you. But be ready for some comments or questions through this system as well. And of course, we will not spam you. It will really only be essential questions and important information because there might be a workaround or something else that we want to tell you regarding the issue that you sent us. The next feature is a new device. As you may or may not have seen, we have the new Opus B6. And from this version on, you can create projects for the B6. I will quickly create a welcome project on the B6 and show you what it looks like. Here we go. So this is the new Opus B6 in the, in the Opus projector. Just as with any other device, you can create your projects for this device. You can convert projects to this device and from this device, the resolution is the same as with the Opus A8. So start using it. Since I have this project open now, I can show you the next new feature, which is the image pool. You can see there is a new node here in the project tree called images. And under this node, there are all images that are used in the project. Don't confuse that with the image library where you can show the image contents of a certain folder. Here you can see the images that are used or have been used in the project. Because if there is an image in the image pool that is not being used anymore, this will also be shown. I will show that to you in a second. So here you have a list of all the images behind the file name. You can see a number. This is the number of times that the image is used. This image right here is used five times in different resolutions. You can drag and drop. If I create a button here, I go, for example, to 
this image. I can drag and drop this here and say I want to use this as the background image for the button. Here in the bottom, you can see there is an image marked in orange. It seems someone didn't tidy up their welcome project before checking it in. This is what it looks like if an image is in the project folder and it was used, but it's not used anymore and or it has been deleted. So this one is both missing and unused. So it's just an entry in our image database. For this, I can replace this image, even though that doesn't really make sense because I'm also not using it. So let's say the image was only missing, but it was used. If the image was deleted on the file system, then I could replace the image here. Or if I really don't need to use this anymore, I can right click on the image node and I can clean up the images and it will show which images will be removed. And now the warning is gone. So this image pool will give you a very nice overview of the images that are actually being used in the project. You have them all listed nicely. You can see when they are used in different resolutions because sometimes it may happen that, you know, you stretch an image a little, but you didn't really want to. Here you have a perfect overview and you can easily reuse images by dragging and dropping them into the project. We have some more smaller improvements. For example, if I go to the project events next to the onProject init event that you already know, there is now an event called onProject init finished. This one will be executed before the project starts loading and building up. This one will be executed after everything was built. So at this point, the homepage is seen and everything that is ready to load is ready. If you ask why the initialization script is put here now, in this new version of the welcome project, there are tests for the heartbeat in the can open protocol. And I didn't want the heartbeat to be sent all the time when the project runs, so I wanted to turn it off. But this was not possible here because the can buses, the protocols, they were not running yet. At this point, they are running, so I can make modifications to them. So this is a very nice addition. Another very interesting and nice new thing is the possibility to set a variable invalid. So if I look at the gauge page, you can check it out for yourself. There's a button called valid now. With this button, let me open the script file. You can see that with the on press and on release events from the button, I will set the variable that is connected to the gauge here to valid and invalid. So if you want variables at certain points to be valid or invalid, you can do that with this command. Another nice little addition that might come in handy is the, the size of string fields. I don't know if you've noticed, but the maximum length of a string field was 255. And while that will be enough for most headlines like here, most texts and buttons and everything, sometimes there might be a longer text to be displayed wasn't possible. You needed to combine several string fields, each with a maximum length of 255. Now we have increased that length to 65,536. The last small thing I want to add, and there are some more, please check out the manual, is the possibility to select several objects, right click, and then create a JavaScript ID array. It will create an array in JavaScript with all these IDs. If you know what this is about, you will be very happy about this. I can tell you that for the touch page here, you can see all these buttons. And if you press them, they turn green. So this is a page to test the touch screen. And there's a clear button here. And what does the clear button do? It removes the green background of all these buttons. And here what I did, I actually used a for loop to set the transparency of all these buttons to true. But you can see here there's one that doesn't fit. It has an ID outside of this range. And something like that might not be possible if you didn't create all these buttons at once. Now, as an alternative, I could just select all these, create a JavaScript array, and I would have all the numbers here, and I could just loop through this list and clear all the green backgrounds of the buttons. So that was our tour. We hope you liked what we did, and we hope you have fun with the Opus Projector. You can download it now from our website and Happy projecting. See you next time.